Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. We are going to take the time in this episode to go through building your very own Ruby on Rails app. Yeah, Rails 8 was just released uh, November 7th, 2024. So it's just a few days ago as of the time I'm recording this episode. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to put together our very own daily affirmation app. So Ruby on Rails has been around for a very long time, 20, 20 years, 25 years. Anyways, somewhere around there. I'm pretty sure it's close to that. But let's take a look at what we're building. So it is a daily affirmation app. So I've got a, I've got the app listing on localhost port 3000. And so when you're on the, the root index page of your app, you will be seeing a, I've got a Bible verse in there right now. Uh, so a verse and then where, where it's coming from in the Bible. And then you can click to a admin mode. And then in this admin mode, you can add or remove, add update or remove other Bible verses. And you might notice here that we're using a Bible API. So we'll be pinging that as we pull in the verses we want to display on our homepage. And we can also edit an existing one. Uh, so we've got uh, the URL to the actual Bible verse, and then we have a optional flag of a translation. So let's update that. And you'll see here that we've got our list. It's a, it pulls a random one out of our database. And so if we hit refresh a few times, Okay, and that's pretty much the app. Throughout the, the process of building this app, you'll learn about the CRUD operations available through Ruby on Rails, uh, how it makes it very easy on putting your own application together, along with working with an API like the Bible API, but you can swap in any of your favorite API. You'll be able to do that at the after this video. All right, so let's, let's get started with Rails 8. Let's see, Ruby V, I'm using Ruby 3.3.0 and Rails 8.0.0. I'm not going to go through the steps of installing Ruby or Rails on your system. I could put some links down below for some handy sites that I came across when needing to set up Ruby on Rails on my machine. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to just assume that you've already got it and you're ready to go. All right, so we can start off creating a new Ruby on Rails application using Rails new, just like any other application. So Rails new, and we can type in dash dash help, which will give us a display about the options available for Rails new. Let's type in our new Rails application name. So we're just gonna type in Rails new, and then let's just call this Rails 8 daily affirmation. Okay, so the generator will do its thing and it will create a Ruby on Rails 8 project for us. Okay, with everything ready, let's go into the directory. We're going to be uh, using Visual Studio Code for this. The structure, the web application structure of a Ruby's, uh, Ruby on Rails app hasn't changed much in since the very first version of Ruby on Rails, and that's to its credit. The structure of an application is basically the same and consistent throughout the past few releases of Rails, which makes it a lot easier to kind of jump in after a few months of not looking at the project. You can quickly come in, navigate yourself around, and figure out what is doing what. So controllers in the app controllers folder tree is where we'll be sticking all of our controllers for our application. The other one we'll be making use of is models. That's where our data objects will be going. And views will be where our markup our HTML and ERB files will be going. And so one other thing to note is in the config folder, we have our, we have our routes.rb. This is the main entry point that requests are submitted to our app and Rails handles and tries to process the URLs that are sent to this application. Okay, so let's get started at the beginning. Okay, so we can just type in Rails S for Rails server, and it will start a local server on port 3000. So let's go ahead and open that up, and boom, we get our default Ruby on Rails 8.00 splash page. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
let's just hit control C, we'll stop that. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to generate a model which will hold the data for our daily affirmation. So Ruby on Rails heavily follows the model view controller pattern of web development. And instead of explaining the role or responsibilities of each of these three sort of segments, it's probably a lot easier to just keep building. You'll be able to see which object is responsible for what kind of role, whether that's model, view, or controller. Okay, so we're gonna be creating a model on the command line via the Rails generate command. So Rails generate, and we're gonna create a new model, and we're just gonna call it affirmation. A rule of thumb when working on Ruby on Rails apps is that models are usually in the singular style because you, as you're working with data in, from your database, it is grabbing one row at a time. So one row of data represents one instance of whatever model you're working with. So we're gonna call this model affirmation and we are going to give it a property of URL, which is a string and a translation, which is also a string. And then let's hit enter. And you can see that we've created a new migration. We've got our new model affirmation and some default test files to go along with it. So let's jump back into our code. Okay, and you'll see that we've got a, the generator created a new model for us called affirmation, which is inheriting from the application record class of Rails. So we don't have a controller for this. We don't have a view for this. All we have is our model, which represents data. And let's go ahead and look at the migration. Okay, so what we've got in our migrations folder, our db migrate folder, is a new migration called create affirmations. What we're doing here is we are creating the table affirmations, uh, which will have two columns, actually four columns. So two columns that we're specifying, a URL and a translation column, both are of type string. And then we are generating timestamp columns. So these would be the created at and updated at columns, date timestamps. Now we can go back and restart the server. So let's boot up Rails again, Rails S. And when we go back into our browser and refresh, Rails will helpfully tell us that, nope, we can't go any further because there is a pending migration that needs to be run just to keep our database up to date with what has been happening in the code base. So let's go back into our prompt here, hit control C, and then just type in rails db migrate, db colon migrate. And rails will go ahead and run that migration. And then now when we run this again, if we refresh, we get our working application again. Okay. So we are working on the data side with something called active record. This is how Rails encapsulates the database within our models. So another fun thing we can try with Ruby on Rails is we can type in Rails console, and we are then given a interactive Ruby prompt that, that will work with our code base. So if we type in affirmation.all, we will get all of the affirmation records in the database. So right now there should be none. So we can see right here that there are none. And so let's create a new one. So let's uh, create a variable. So one equals affirmation.new. And then if we type out one, you can see here, we've got a ID of nil, URL of nil. Well, all the properties are nil because we haven't specified anything and we haven't created anything or we haven't saved it to the database yet. So let's go ahead and update a property. So update URL equals HTTPS foo.com. And then one dot translation. We can just use KJV for just for fun. So now when we print out the one object, we've got a URL property defined, a translation defined, and the other fields are still nil because of course we haven't persisted anything to the database. So if we then use one dot save, you can see here that our database insertion 
code comes up in the Rails console, and we've committed the record back to the database right here in this transaction. So now if we type in affirmation.all, we then get one record back, which is the one that we just created right now. So let's go ahead and create another one. Let's call this two. Okay, so we now have two records in there, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new one, but passing in properties right in the constructor of the object. So we can say three equals affirmation dot new, and then we'll pass in params. Uh, let's call it a URL of https three dot com. A translation of I don't know ENG. Why not? and then three dot save, and you'll see that we now have three records in our database. So affirmation dot all. Okay, so we've got one, two, and three objects in our database, three records. So we can use other handy helper methods such as first and last. So the model name, so affirmation dot first, will return the first record that was created which is an ID of one and affirmation dot last will give us the last record, which is ID of three. We can find a specific row of the affirmation table by look, by using the find method. So affirmation dot find and then passing in an ID. Let's say we want to find the record with ID of two. So affirmation dot find two will then return the record with the ID of two. And we can also use a where clause through the affirmation model object. So affirmation dot where, and then let's pass in a, a where clause. So let's say where uh, translation is, let's say ESP. Okay, and it returns no records back because no records have the ESP translation. Let's rerun this with the KJV. And we see that we've got two records coming back, both with the KJV translation. Okay, that's a cool feature of Ruby on Rails is using the Rails console. So let's exit this and go back into our application. So exit. Okay, we've run the migration. And now let's create a new controller for this. Okay, so we're gonna call this the affirmations controller. So under controllers, create a new file called affirmations controller.rb. Okay, and let's create a new class of affirmations controller, which inherits from application controller. This is what Rails will look for when attempting to resolve a request from the browser. So one of the methods we can use is called index, and this is the basic get all of our controller, of our object controller. So we'll call it def index, define index. And here we're just gonna create an instance variable called affirmations. That's what the ampersand is in front of the variable name. So ampersand affirmations equals affirmation Dot all. So get all the records within the affirmation table, return them to the affirmations instance variable. We're not quite done because we have no way to visualize what's going on. So let's go through our views. And what we want to do is create a affirmations folder within views and then a index.html.erb file. So basically the path through the views should match the path through the controllers. So we've got a controllers affirmations controller, and then it should match the views affirmations folder name, and then the action in our controller should match the view file name here. So the action we're using in the controller is index. So the file name of the view file should be index.html.erb. So what we're gonna do is just display all of our affirmations that are in the database. So daily affirmation list, and we'll put this within a unordered list. So ampersand affirmations 
dot each do affirmation. Okay, and then we'll end this before we work on it in the middle. Okay, so we're going to loop through each affirmation in the collection. And then all we're going to do is create a, an li element and then display the affirmation URL and the affirmation translation. Before we can even see this, we have to define a route for it in the routes file. Okay, so here we've got a, a handy comment here, defines the root path route. So we can just uncomment this. And instead of going to posts hashtag index, we are going to go to the affirmations controller and use the index action. So hashtag index. Okay, let's see how this looks. So Rails S, and then the web server starts up. And we now see our three rows of our affirmations table. Very cool. All right. I think we're on a good path. So what we want to do is we want to now create a new affirmation. So this is handled with Ruby on Rails with the new action. More specifically, we want to operate with the affirmations resource uh, to make CRUD requests to it. So we want to we want to create new affirmations, we want to update them, we want to pull them from the database, and we want to be able to delete them in sort of our, our little admin view. So to help us out, Rails has a route entry that we can define here just called resources. So resources colon affirmations. And so what this will tell Ruby on Rails is that use Rails to define the CRUD routes for the affirmation resource. Okay, so if we go back to our command line to help you visualize what's going on here, if we hit control C, if we type in Rails routes, we will get a giant list of all of the routes that our Ruby on Rails server will be listening for, which will be accessible. So if we want to filter that down to just working with the affirmations, we can type in Rails routes, and then we want to pipe it. So use the vertical bar, and then grep, whoops, grep affirmation. And now we should only see the URLs that work with our affirmations. Okay, so we the application supports a get request, so this is a get all. Okay, so the application, so Rails supports a get all request, so get slash affirmations, as well as a post slash affirmations, which creates a new instance of the affirmation object in the database. We can also get uh, the, uh, we can also use slash new to display a form, which we'll be creating here shortly, as well as using the ID on the URL to display the individual affirmation that we want to work with. So let's keep going on this. Uh, so we want to use the new route. And what new will do is it will create allow us to create a new instance of the affirmations model object but it won't persist anything to the database yet. So back in our affirmations controller, let's define another method called new. Let's just have an ampersand affirmation equals affirmation.new. So all we're gonna do is create a new instance of the object and return it to the front end. So back in our views here, in our affirmations folder, let's create a file called new.html.erb. Here we can display a form. Okay, so let's do, let's call this an h1 of a new affirmation. Okay, and what we can do is use a, a handy helper called form with. We want to generate a form using the instance of the affirmation that we've just returned via the controller there in that new action. Okay, so we want to work with the model affirmation, and we're going to keep it really simple here. We're just going to create create a div. We're going to define a form dot label for the URL, and then a form text field which will contain the actual URL that the user is entering. And then let's create another one to handle the translation field. 
form dot label for translation form dot text field translation so we're working with the translation property of the object instance and then finally the submit a bit of view code so what we're what we're doing is we are using the form with rails helper to work with a instance of the model affirmation okay and then within this block we are laying out the different HTML input controls that we want to use. We are defining the URL with a label and then a text input field, and then a label for the translation property and a text field to hold our text for the translation. Now you might notice in, in our ERB files that we have a percent equals and just a percent. And what is the difference between these two things? And the only thing you really need to remember is that when you are actually wanting to display anything, so when you want to render any text or anything to the browser, then you'll need to use the percent equals style of surrounding the code that you're trying to write up. If you just have the percent, then what this is telling ERB is that you just want to work with an object. So if you just want to work with a, if you're just trying to use the object on the view without actually displaying any piece of it, then you don't need the equal sign for working with whatever statement you're trying to write down. It'll make sense as you use Ruby on Rails a little more. So notice here, maybe this will be a clearer helper here. Notice here that we are wanting to work with the affirmations array. And so with this enumeration definition, we're not actually displaying any output on this, on this line here. So we should keep this without using the equal sign. And here where we are displaying something to, to the browser, we'll need the equal sign to work with the variable or property that we're trying to display. So let's see this in action. Maybe that'll help things out. Let's go here. So we've got our list here on localhost 3000. So if we type in slash affirmations slash new, it will then make the request. When we make a request to slash new, the whole path will be sent first into the routes RB file, affirmations as a resource. So then it will look for the affirmations controller, which it'll find, which it'll find right here. And then we are trying to use the new action. So it'll try to find this action right here called new. And then it will, we see here that we are creating a instance of the, of a new affirmation record and then tying it to the ampersand affirmation variable name, which will then look for the view affirmations new.html.rb file. Remember, recall that we have the, an instance variable declared of the at affirmation. And then we want to use the helper called form with, and then pass in what we want to use with that helper, which is our form. And then we go through the rest, which is what we've already declared. Okay, so let's create a, another new record. So let's just call this uh, record four, and then translation won't matter. And let's try and create it. Okay, so we've submitted the form and nothing is created because we haven't implemented the create action within the controller. So back in our controller, we need to override the create action. And so what we wanna do is wanna create a new instance of affirmation using the parameters that are coming through from the URL request from the post request that the browser will send. Okay, so we can make a new method, a new sub method here called affirmation params. And then down here, we'll create a private section and we'll define affirmation params of our request parameters. And we can lock this down so that we can restrict what we're sending into this form. So we are expecting a field called URL and a field called translation. So when we call the method name here, 
Ruby will look through the parameters sent from the request. So assuming everything looks okay, we will try to save it. So if affirmation.save, if the save is successful, then we want to redirect to, and then we want to use the action index. Otherwise, if the save doesn't work, we can render an error, unprocessable entity. So we've got a create method defined now. So let's go ahead and go back to our form. Let's go back to our form. I'll just refresh it. Okay, and let's see. We'll just use yahoo.com and then the translation, whatever. Okay, so when we create it, it should send a post request back to our controller, which is now able to handle the create action and then it will persist it to the database. Yep, so it looks like it persisted to the database and then redirected us to the index list of all the affirmations. So we, we are trucking along here pretty cool. All right, now let's go ahead and make an edit action. So similar to the new action being responsible for displaying a form for the user to enter properties for a new object, we can do the same thing for editing, which is called edit. We just need to define an action here called edit, and our affirmation will be the ID of that is passed in from the URL request. So usually when, we, when we're trying out the edit action, okay, so down here in the views under affirmations, let's go ahead and create a new file called edit. And basically we can display the same form as the new. So let's just cut and paste this whole thing. And let's just call this, call the title of it, edit affirmation. Okay, but the rest of this information stays the same. Let's go back to our index list. And so here we're displaying, as you can see, each URL and each translation. But let's also now display a edit link at the end of this object. So let's create another vertical bar here. We'll display another vertical bar here. And then another, we'll use that percent equals helper there because we want to output this stuff to the view. We want to use a, another helper, Rails helper here called link to. And so this will automatically, Rails will automatically generate a, the markup necessary for a hyperlink for us. So we want to link to the, a label name of edit, sorry. And then what action do we want to link to? So we want to link to the edit affirmation path action. And we want to pass in the current affirmation. So this current affirmation here is what we'll pass in to the edit affirmation path function name. And so this is a helper function as part of the link to. And you might be asking, where the heck does this edit affirmation path come from? So back on Rails routes, let's keep them both up here. So if we type in, remember Rails routes, and then if we want to grep affirmation. So when we want to get a, a single instance, a single specific affirmation instance, then we have a helper name here defined next to the get request uh, URL format. So in other words, uh, if you specify like new underscore affirmation underscore path, that will take us to creating a that new affirmation form. And if we type in edit underscore affirmation underscore path, then Rails will resolve that to a get of that specific affirmation object. So just to show you what I mean, um, after this URL list, let's go ahead and use the link to helper to create a new one. So percent equals link underscore to, and then new. And then remember we, we found this to be new underscore, new underscore affirmation underscore path. So we now we've, we've got an edit and we've got a new. Okay, so here we've got our list here. We've got an edit hyperlink beside each of these affirmation records. We've got a new link now showing up here. So if we go to new, we get our new form. And if we try and edit one of these, we should now see the proper object that we've got editing. So notice the URL is 
slash affirmations slash one, which is the ID of that object, and then edit. So if I hit submit here, it will then not do anything because we are trying to submit the form. Rails is trying to find the update action defined in our controller method, which we have not yet defined. So let's go back and do that now. And it's gonna look very similar to the create. So define an update. So our affirmation is equal to affirmation.find params. So first we wanna find the record that, we're, that we need to update. And then if we, if ampersand affirmation dot update, and then we'll make use of those affirmation params again from the request, then we wanna redirect to action index. Else render edit, and then a status of similar to what we did with the create. And let's end that. Okay, so now when we try to save it, if the save is successful of our record, then we'll redirect to the index action, which in our case, we'll just go back and display the list of all the affirmations in our database. Okay, so we're trying to edit the first one. Let's just, let's just put some stuff there beside the URL and hit update. And you notice that it's now been updated and we've returned to the index, which is listing all of the entries. Okay, cool. So the last one we need to work on is deleting. Deleting is a little bit of a different, it's, it's the same, but different. So we need to define a, a method here called destroy. So define destroy. And so again, what we're gonna do is at affirmation is gonna be affirmation.find params.id. And then we are going to call destroy on that active record object instance, and then redirect to our root path, along with the status of C other. So how do we then activate this destroy action? Well, back in our view, back in our view, we're going to have to, in our index of our view here, we're going to have to add something, add another vertical bar here. And this is gonna be a very long line, but that's all right. So we're gonna create another link to, we can use link to again. So link underscore to, and then let's call it delete. And then what we wanna do is use affirmation.path of our affirmation instance. And then parameter to this, to this helper is some additional data. So we wanna define a turbo underscore method of delete and a turbo confirm, are you sure? And then let's end this off. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use turbo, the, this turbo confirm to basically display a prompt. Are you sure? Whenever we wanna de delete a record. And so if we hit cancel, then we cancel out of this request. If we hit yes or okay, then it will proceed to send a delete request along with our affirmation record to this affirmation path, which will then be picked up by our controller and resolved to the destroy action handler, where it will attempt to find the record from the given affirmation ID. It will destroy it and then redirect to the root path of our application, which in this case is just the main index of all of those existing affirmations. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So let's refresh here. Okay, so we see the ability to delete next to each one. So let's go ahead and delete. And it says, you know, are you sure? Here's the confirmation, let's hit okay. And we now see just three left. So let's go ahead and delete. Uh, we'll hit cancel to make sure. And yep, nothing, is hap nothing happens. So let's go ahead and delete all of these. So our database should now be empty of any of our affirmation records, but we've got the manager here to manage the different ones. Okay, so now let's move on to working with a API to actually work with the affirmation that we're trying to display. Okay, so let's, I found an API out there called Bible-API. So this is a free API 
where we can call with any REST application. And so we can specify a single verse, we can specify a range, and we have different translations available. So I think we have, uh, yeah, we have a list here of the translations available. So I mostly try and follow the King James Version, but you may pick whatever translation appeals to you and perhaps in your own language. So Latin, Portuguese, Czech, Cherokee, which is really cool, uh, and Romanian. So those are the different translations available, or different languages anyway. Uh, but we have different translations of English right here. So I'll be going by the KJV translation. So what we want to do is we want to be able to make a HTTP request from our application, which will then resolve to whatever verse we're looking for through this API, and then work with the response to display it in our application. So we know what API we're using, and so now we're gonna need to actually update our server to work with a package called HTT Party. And this is an easy HTTP client that you can use in Ruby on Rails to make whatever calls you need to make to other web services. So if you go to rubygems.org and we search for HTT Party, Say so we click on this. Uh, so we get a handy clipboard copy method here, copy to clipboard, that we will put into our gem file. So go back into our, okay. And so at the very bottom, we just need to paste our gem HTT party. And before we can use it, all we need to do is run bundle install. And Rails will go through the work of pulling it down and resolving the dependencies. Okay, so with that installed, now we can keep the server running. So Rails S, and let's go back into our controller. And so what we're going to do is we are now going to shift gears a little bit in this app. Because what I'm picturing is that there's kind of two modes that I was going through in the demo there. So in the default mode, which is kind of like a read-only mode, you would go to the home page and you would get a random affirmation that is in your list, and then it would just display that for you on that default homepage. And then if you wanted to edit any of the affirmations, there would be sort of a link to an admin mode that would give us the ability to edit or manage all of these affirmations. So let's create a new controller here called daily controller. So under controllers, new file, daily controller. And so we're going to call it uh, daily controller, which inherits from the application controller. We're going to work with the index action here. So whenever we come to slash, like the root path of daily controller, we will then see a random affirmation. So let's first, let's just pull a random one before we work with the HTTP party affirmations equals affirmation.all. So pull all of them from our database and then just return a random affirmation. So at affirmation equals affirmations dot sample. So this is a handy Ruby method to just pull a random record from this array. Okay, and it'll return to our front end. So what we now need to do is create a view. So under views, let's create a new folder called daily, and then let's create a index.html.erb. So far, so good, I think. And then so in our new index file, let's just, we can give it a title, but let's leave a title out of it. And we'll give ourselves a div and we'll call this our affirmation container. And then we'll just uh, link to, we'll create a link to the admin. So percent equals link to admin and then the path will be the affirmations path it's the plural version of our model that we want to get all of them basically we want to go to the index action of the affirmation controller okay so then what we want to do is let's just for our sake right now we'll uh, work with the affirmation URL, we'll display that, and then we'll display the translation. Aff 
Affirmation translation. Okay, so let's go ahead and oh, so we need to do one more thing. So we need to over we need to update. We need to update the routes. So the main route for our application, so we can leave this in here, but now the main route here, instead of affirmations.index, this is going to be daily.index. So see how easy it is to update that? So now when we go in, so I think the code looks right, but we deleted all of them. So let's go back in our daily index. If we use the ampersand in front of the property, then Rails will attempt to make use of, Rails will attempt to access it, but it won't throw an error if it's not there. So let's see if this helps us out here. All right, so we've got no, no affirmation yet. So let's go into our admin section. So let's click on that. Let's just create a new one. Let's actually pull in a sample one here. So let's work with John 316. Okay, so the URL we'll use is John 316 and the translation will be KJV. And let's create that. Okay, so we've got one now in our daily list. So we don't have a way of going back to the home page from our from our manager, our affirmations manager. Let's quickly fix that right now. So we can go uh, home. So percent equals link to, and we'll just call this home, and then we'll call this the root path, root underscore path. Okay, we've got the ability to go home, and we display our a random entry here. Now, since there's only one, even though I hit refresh, it's still just the same one. And our admin link should maybe be down here instead of right next to it on the same line, but whatever, okay. We've got this so far. So we're working with a random affirmation. Okay, so now let's actually use HTT party to grab the verses that we wanna work with that correspond to that affirmation. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct a URL, so URL equals, and we'll use the string interpolation of Ruby to help us out here. So hashtag, uh, and then we're gonna be working with affirmation.url, and then we are gonna be appending a translation equal to the hashtag of the affirmation.translation. Okay, so we're constructing our own URL here, and then let's work with HTTP party, HT, HTTP party dot get the URL. So we stuff the response from that client request into response, and then all we have to do is use JSON parse of the response dot body. And then let's declare a instance variable of verses. And we'll work with the verses array, which is part of the body. Now, how do I know all this? Because I kind of cheated and built all this before. No, well, yeah, but also because we can now use a debugger in Ruby on Rails. Well, we always could, but let's go through how to use it now. So if you'll notice in the gem file, in the development section here, we've got a gem here called debug. Okay, so there's a link here to a guide that allows you to research more on it. I won't follow it, but feel free to go, go through it at your own time. But essentially, all we need to do is add a breakpoint in this code, then we will get the ability to use the interactive console that we worked with before with the model in order to step through our code right here. So, right after the URL definition, Let's go ahead and just use the keyword debugger there, okay? And then let's go ahead and refresh. And if we go back to our running thing, you'll see that we now popped up into the debug mode. So we were, we've just created the affirmation, which is a random sample from the list, and we've just created our URL. So if we type in URL, we now see what we've generated with the help of our string interpolation right here. So next we want to step through the response. So let's type next and you'll see the arrow here is now pointing to response equals HTTP party dot get with the URL. So let's hit next again and it's made the request. So let's type response and now we see what's in the response. So we've got a reference in the payload 
of John 3.16. We've got a versus array. And we've got a translation ID of KJV, translation name, and a translation note property. Okay, so now we want to hit next again. And now body should contain the response.body, which it does. Okay, and let's, so we were, we're stuffing the versus, per, versus array into the instance variable versus. So this array right here. So this is handy if we want to return multiple verses or a range via that same API. Okay, but let's say that you're working through this console and you don't know where you are. You're, you've forgotten where you are in the actual program. So if you type in where am I, return you to where the current execution pointer is. So to get out of this, we just hit continue and we will continue on our way. Okay, so let's go here and let's take out this debugger. Okay, so we are pulling back the versus array from the response from the body. And let's go back to our daily view here and let's get rid of this. And so now what we want to do is let's create a unordered list and we'll give it a class name of affirmation dash list. Okay, and then so for each of the verses, so verses dot each, we want to do verse and we want to display a list element and surround the actual verse with a paragraph HTML keyword. So verse uh, and the property is named text. Okay, slash p. And then what we want to do is give a little author section. So we want to percent equals. So we want to reference the book that we're pulling from. So again, using the string interpolation. So hashtag verse and then book name. And then we want to display the chapter. So chapter uh, verse and then the property that was in the response was called, I believe, chapter name. Okay, just chapter. And then verse, string interpolation again to reference the verse, verse property. Lots of verses. And then we want to end that string properly here, which we are. Close it off. Close the span tag. So now this should, oh, and let's, you know what? Just to match what we have there, let's close it here. And then let's close the list element. Oh, and then after the li, we need to end it. Okay, so we want to loop through each of the verses that are in that array and display them right here. Okay, so for, we got the correct verse. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And of course, that's John 3.16. Okay, so we've displayed this. Now let's make it look a little bit prettier. So I am going to work with some I've got an image and some CSS to update. So in our app assets folder, we've got one here, a subfolder called images and style sheets. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste a image that I found. Okay. So I've copied it into, into images. You can see it right here. Nature background. Beautiful. All right. And then now we want to update some CSS. So in our style sheets, style sheets folder, we've got a stylesheet.css. Now Rails 8 uses something called prop shaft to manage the assets and we're not going to be going too much into detail with it right now. All we really need to learn at the moment is that any CSS that we update in this CSS file will be then make it make its way into the application. So we had a class there called affirmation container. So let's work with that. So we've got a background image uh, and we want to give a URL of slash nature.background-1.jpg. So one of the features of PropShaft is that it will automatically look to resolve this asset path for us, this image path, path for us. So if we keep it within the root of images, then it will resolve slash image name to the actual assets images folder. And then it gave us a background color of black, but it doesn't really matter. We don't see it. Uh, then I've got a padding of 50 pixels on every side and a padding bottom of 100 pixels. Okay. And then for our affirmation list class, I'm just doing a list style type 
none. And then for each list element of the affirmation list, so affirmation list class li, okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna use a font size of 60 pixels and then a color of white. You can make it whatever color you want later. And then for that uh, little author tag after the verse, li dot author and we want to use a font style of italic and a font size of 40 px and then finally uh, the hyperlinks the hyperlink color so affirmation dash container greater than a we want a color of white and a font size of 20 pixels we've got a little bit of css here to work with let's go ahead and refresh this and now that we see that we've got our nature background image, our text is in white in big letters, we've got our italicized author text, and then finally our link to our admin section. So we've got here our finished homepage of our daily affirmation. And so if we hit refresh, we should be seeing, well, the same one because we only have one. Deo That's really cool. So we've created our own daily affirmation written in Ruby on Rails 8. So indirectly, we've been using some of the new features of Rails 8, but we haven't specifically gone through a lot of them in this video. I just wanted to cover the basics of working with Ruby on Rails, working on an application, using the interactive console, using the debugger, running a migration, and basic operations like that just to help you get started. I really hope you enjoyed this project. Give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. Leave a comment down below if you ran into any issues getting this set up and running on your machine. The link to the code should be in the description down below, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day, everyone. Peace. Your eminence.